guys, welcome back to another tying video with Old Florida. My name is Mike, and today we're going to be tying a finesse changer. First thing we're going to do is take our 10 mil shank, and we are going to cut the back of it with wire cutters, as you can see, right at that bend as it comes down. We're not going to need that bend on the first part, so we're going to go ahead and put that in our vise. Make sure it's nice and secure. Alright, we're going to take our thread and we're going to start it right behind the eye of the hook and we're going to work our way back right to the bend of that all the way at the back. Go ahead and just trim that tag thread off. We are going to take our white marabou and I'm going to take one piece. What I'm going to do is run my fingers through it and then strip down with my other fingers. This just gets rid of the unnecessary bulk to tie it in. So I'm going to take that piece and tie about a one inch section right on the top of that shank of the hook with a couple nice tight wraps, maybe two or three. Just twist that a little bit to make sure it's nice and sturdy. I'm going to repeat that same step, run my fingers through it and get rid of all that excess bulk. So I just have a nice little piece as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and invert that. And I'm going to tie this on on the tie this in on the underside. Just spreading it around the vise, making sure I get full coverage, making sure it's even with the other tail, the other piece of marabou, and three loose wraps, and then I'm going to really start cinching it down. And then I'm going to come in here with my scissors and trim everything away at once. This is going to leave a nice little even tie-in point. for our finesse chenille. And once I got that all trimmed up, I'm going to come in here and clean up those wraps with some nice tight clean wraps. I'm going to move my thread to the eye of the hook and build up just a little bit of a base. And then we could take our finesse chenille. I actually just cut maybe, I don't know, six inch or eight inch section just so it's easy to work with. I'm going to go ahead and pluck that little tip off. I'm going to tie this in right behind the eye of the hook, or sorry, eye of the shank. I'm going to secure that down. I'm going to bring my thread all the way back to where it meets that marabou. When it's nice tied down secure, I'm going to take that and I'm just going to go ahead and palmer that nice and tight all the way forward nice extremely tight touching wraps the tighter the better you can it just helps in the trimming I'm gonna palmer everything back until I get to the eye of the shank you could probably fit around eight or so wraps don't quote me on that one but once we get to the eye I'm gonna go ahead and pull down with the finesse chenille as you can see bring my thread behind it and up. So I captured that. I'm going to do two wraps behind it and then two wraps in front of it. Then you could go ahead and trim that out. One thing to note on these shanks, as good as they are, one big downside is they are very sharp when it comes to that eye of the hook right there. Just be very careful, your thread slips in there and it will cut extremely easy. Especially, I'll show you on the next step, what I'm talking about. When you connect the joints together, you can cut your thread. I'm gonna come in here with a comb. I like combing out every section I do before I move on. This just makes it a little bit easier later on. So once I got everything like that done, combed out, I'm gonna put two wraps on the top, pulling everything back, and then I'm gonna whip finish right on the top of that material. I like to do two sets of three. You can add glue in between these steps for video purposes. I probably will not do that. And I honestly don't, no, don't do that regularly either. Next step is I'm gonna take, I'll show you a little bit closer up if I can. I'm gonna take this hook and I'm just gonna go ahead and clip it right like that. So it's just hanging right there. As you can see, I'm going to pinch it, 
back off my vise jaw and I'm just going to slide just that little bottom part right in my vise jaw and clamp it down. So that's what it's going to look like for the next step. So this is going to be the tail section. And now this, as I said before, as you can see this bottom part is extremely sharp. And if I just go ahead and wrench down on it, my thread will probably break. Uh, and it didn't break of course for the video. But I'll pull tight, I'll cinch that down, I'll put a couple wraps going backwards, and then I'm going to move my thread right in front doing a couple very easy wraps, just covering that really sharp part. The tail can be a little bit annoying. If you want to get a twisty tie for a bag, you can also twisty tie it right to here, which actually helps a little bit. But I'm just going to keep going with it. So as I wrap all the way up, I'm trying to build up just a little bit of a ramp and get my thread as far back that way as I can on the shank. And then I'm going to take my next piece of finesse chenille. I'm going to go ahead and just pull a little piece so I could tie it in. Move that last tail section out of the way. Start it right behind the eye of the hook and wrap all the way back. And then make sure that's nice and secure. And I'm going ahead I'm going to go ahead and just palmer all the way to the eye of the hook, making touching tight wraps, palmering this as tight as I can, like I did in the last step. And we're just going to keep palmering that all the way up. If you want to stop halfway through and use a bodkin or a comb and just kind of work that out, it just saves some time in the end because you're going to have to comb it out anyway, but at least you get to work a little bit easier when there's only one piece in a vise. So after I got that little piece combed out, I'm just going to keep palmering right up to the eye of the hook, leaving just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of room, just enough so I don't crowd the eye, and I can capture it with two wraps, pull everything back, two wraps, trim this out, pull everything back and then two more wraps and then I'm going to go ahead pull everything back and whip finish. Pulling everything back is a very crucial step. It really lays the fibers backwards and makes this fly look much better. If you don't pull it back like that it can start to look a little wonky and we're going to go ahead and trim that one out and I will actually come in here and just comb that out while I'm here. And we're going to go ahead and get the next clip. Going to head drop that right on the eye of this next clip. We're going to pinch it, open our vise, clamp that back little section of the next clamp, and we can start again. Take our thread, close that fully, go ahead and put couple nice tight wraps and then super loose wraps right where that part opens up because you don't want to cut your thread. We're going to secure that nice and tight making a nice little thread ramp all the way to the back as far back as we can. I'm going to come in here I'm going to pull out just a little bit more of that exposing the core tie that in right behind the eye of the hook and wrap as far back as we can. You don't have to worry about putting too many wraps right here as the game changer chenille should cover it. Move our bobbin out of the way up front and we're going to repeat the step. Nice tight touching wraps all the way till we get to right behind the eye of the hook leaving just a little bit of room just so we don't crowd the eye with our 210 thread. I will stop halfway through. And comb this out. Actually, I'm not going to stop halfway through. I'm just going to comb it out when I'm done capturing this. So capture it. Two wraps. And then two more. Trim it out.
I'm going to comb it before I whip finish. Once I got most of it combed out or picked out, pull everything back, two wraps, and then whip finish right on top of that material. Making sure to get everything that you pulled back in the whip finish. Then we could go ahead and trim that out. Put our next piece on. Loosen up our vise and reclamp it. And then we're going to repeat the step again. We're going to close our shank. Going to build a little bit of a ramp going backwards with some looser wraps where the sharp part is. Trim out our thread. Pull out just a little bit exposing that core on the finesse chenille just so we could tie it in. Once we got that tied in, we're going to go all the way to the back, move our thread up forward to the eye of the hook, and we're going to go ahead and palmer that. Nice tight touching wraps, making sure we get full coverage. It helps if you keep your finger in place until you move to the other side. As you see, I pinch it and then pull it toward me and keep working my way up, leaving just a tiny bit of room so we don't crowd the eye like I say. And we got that captured, two wraps. Pull everything back, two more. I will go ahead and comb this out. Before I whip finish, or you could use a bodkin and pick this out, either or works. Pull everything back, go ahead and whip finish that. All right, once we got that done, we can go ahead and trim it out, or cut our thread, put the next clip on. and put the next shank in our vise. As you can start to see, it's starting to resemble a game changer a little bit, not really. We're gonna go ahead and close that shank. Loose wraps up front so we don't break our thread. Come in here, trim our tag end. Make a nice little body with our thread to the back so the thread doesn't slip down. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the core, exposing the core. I'm going to wrap as far as we can back with this game changer chenille, finesse chenille. And then we're going to repeat the process. We're going to take our thread, or take our finesse chenille, we're going to palmer that all the way back, or all the way forward actually, toward the eye of the hook. Nice, tight, touching wraps. All right. I'm like borderline overcrowding the eye on this one. If I don't do enough wrap, it'll look bad. But if I do too many, it'll look bad. So we're gonna make sure we pull everything nice and tight backwards. I'm actually going to cut a little bit of this fiber out just so I don't crowd the eye. I'm going to come in here with my comb, pluck it out just a little bit. And once I got that, pull everything back, give it a nice whip finish. Two sets of three should do the trick. I'm actually going to do one more on this one. 
little bit further back on the material. All right, once we got that, I will go ahead and comb this one out just a little bit again. I'm gonna comb this whole tail out. All right, glad I put that extra one on there. Trim out that little tag piece. All right, we're gonna go ahead and set that aside for one sec. We're gonna take our SL12S short and we're gonna go ahead and throw that in the vise. Once we got that secured in there, we're gonna take our thread, start it right behind. Actually, we're gonna start it a little bit behind the eye of the hook. And we're gonna work our way down just about to the bend of the hook. Actually move it just a little bit further up. And then we're gonna come in here with our wire. This is our stainless wire. This is gonna be the connection between the tail and the actual fly. What I'm gonna do is actually tie this on the side closest to me. And I'll flip this over so I can show you guys in a sec. I'm gonna tie this one about one eye length behind the eye, as you can see that. I'm gonna take my thread, I'm gonna tighten that extremely secure, wrapping all the way forward. And then this wire can cut your thread, so I'm not actually not gonna fall off, I'm just gonna come right on top of it with a loose wrap, and I'm gonna wrap back down, nice and tight, as tight as you can. And then I'm gonna take my thread, I'm gonna wrap one time behind this wire, if you saw what I did there. This just makes it easier so it bites a little bit harder so it doesn't slip. We're gonna take our tail, stand this wire up, poke it through the bottom of the tail, feed the wire all the way up. And this is actually gonna come off on one side. I don't want it on the top of the hook, I want it off to one side making a loop vertically, not horizontal. This actually helps with fouling a little bit. So as you can see, I'll invert this for you. I don't want it horizontal, I want it vertically just like that. I'm actually going to tie this one on the top of the shank of the hook now. But before I do that, I'm going to make a small little circle, I'm going to come in here with my wire cutters, and I'm going to cut this right before the other wire ends. What that does is it actually makes a ramp. I'll show you when I'm done with this because it's gonna be a little hard to see right now. So this is gonna get tied right on top of this other piece of wire. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like just a little bit. I'm not quite done yet, but as you can see, the first piece of wire was tied a little bit forward. The second piece stops a little bit right before that. That's just so you don't get a big blunt drop off with two pieces of wire. It'll be a stage of wire, it'll go down, another stage of wire, and then it's a smoother transition. But we're gonna wrap that small little circle that we have in the back that I'll show you again. Hopefully I could zoom in on it. As you can see, that's probably smaller than almost the eye of the shank the eye of the hook where this tail is connected to and it's coming off of one side. Once we got that done and that wire is nice, tight and secure, if you wanted to, you can put glue right here. I'm personally not going to just because I know I put enough pressure where it's not gonna come off. Next, we're gonna take our finesse chenille. We're gonna pinch off a good little bit, exposing that cord. I'm gonna tie that down all the way right to that wire, almost past the wire, but not really. Just as close as we can. I'm gonna really make sure that's cinched down tight. I'm gonna make a little bit of a thread ramp right on that wire. Just be careful not to cut your thread because it's extremely sharp. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start palmering this as tight as I possibly can to that back. If you don't go quite far enough back, you'll see a big gap in between where you started your tail and your body on the shank of the hook. 
So we're just going to come here and we're going to palmer all the way forward. Nice tight touching wraps. We are almost done. This is a super easy pattern. As you can see, it really only involves maybe two or three steps beside the whole wire. Once we're about halfway on the shank of this hook, I am going to stop and pick this out very thoroughly. This is the main body of your fly. So I like to come in here with the comb, really get in there nice and deep and pluck them out. You really don't want to necessarily break the fibers, but if you can work them free, that's the best way to do it. I like combing from the back up as it really unsticks all the fibers that were trapped. And we're going to keep just palmering all the way up. And we're going to get right to the eye of the hook on this one. I'm going to stop again right before I get to the eye of the hook. And I'm going to comb this out one more time. Just to make sure that if I can put another wrap, I will. But when I comb this out, it'll let me know where I'm at as far as if I need to wrap one or two more times. I think I could sneak one more wrap in there. I'm going to make sure this is nice and separated, that I have a clear tie-in point. Capture that with two wraps. Put one nice super tight wrap in front. I don't want to crowd the eye of this, but I do want to make sure it's a full body. And like I said, before I whip finish, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to comb all of this out again. I really suggest picking this out as much as possible. It gives you the best finish result. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to whip finish while pulling all of that material backwards. I'm going to do one more. Make sure this is nice and clean. All right, we could go ahead and cut that. Once we got that done, our basically tying of the fly is gonna be done. As you can see, we have our little profile of a body. What I like to do is come in here from the side before I even do anything. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna try to trim this a little bit flatter on the head and I'll show you why in a second this is just a really rough trim it's basically just to flatten the sides out so when we put the eyes instead of just attaching the eyes to the material you'll see that they're gonna actually glue to the shank of the hook which is what you want So we're gonna take our fish skull living eyes. We're gonna put a small little drop, if you could see that, on that eye of Loctite gel. I like to put the pupil facing backwards. That's just me. You don't have to be that critical. I'm gonna put that pretty far up, almost right at touching the thread of the head. And I'm really gonna push nice and hard, securing, if you could see that, to the actual shank of the hook and not just the material. And while that's still a little wet, I'm gonna to try to do that a little bit quicker. Same thing, just a little bit pea size right in there. I'm gonna go ahead, place that second eye nice and tight, same exact spot, looking from the very front, making sure they're all even. Go ahead and push those eyes nice and tight together. Just a small little tip, if you put a little too much glue, take a bodkin, get some off of it. You can also lick your finger and it'll really help negate the super glue from sticking to your finger. So once you got that done, we're gonna let that dry for about a minute or so. And then we can come in here, take this off of our vise, and we're just gonna make two super quick, clean cuts really tight to those eyes, building a little head. 
the trimming of this fly could be a little daunting. You could go as crazy as you want. But just those two first cuts really touching the eye, you could start to see this fly really take shape. I haven't trimmed the body at all. The way I like to trim the body is holding it up and cutting from the back. It's a little bit hard while doing it for on the camera. So I'm actually going to go ahead and trim this fly. I'll try to show you a little bit, but I like to put it in my vise, turn it, always have the scissors angled as a bait fish profile would be from the head all the way down to the tail. I will finish trimming this fly off camera, but you do get the general idea. Trimming pretty close to the tail. You do have to cut some of this material in the beginning of the tail section. You might actually want to take your scissor and hold it almost backwards and try to cut some of the material off the tail like that. As you can start to see, this really starts to take shape pretty quickly. But just keep on trimming away. You don't want to go too crazy. But one benefit of trimming this fly a good bit is that it doesn't hold water at all. So it's extremely easy to cast. This is just a great all around bass pattern, snook pattern, peacock pattern. Oh man, the possibilities are endless with this thing. I'm going to go ahead and take this one off the vise for a sec. I'm going to hold the tail in between my pointer and my ring finger. As you can see like that, holding all the sections pretty, pretty straight. And I'm going to just trim to my fingers, making sure not to cut my fingers. As you can see, the eyes are glued nice, properly, and even. This fly is very easy to cast. It sheds water like crazy. It's just an awesome little bait fish pattern. The movement is absolutely incredible. And you could go as crazy as you want trimming this fly, but as far as video purposes goes, I think that we are pretty much done here. Of course not. I'm just going to keep cutting away at my fly. But at a certain point, you will realize that it looks great. So that's going to be the done fly. This is Blaine Chocolate's Finesse Changer. Just a great little pattern. Absolutely love throwing it. Super fun to tie. Super fun to throw. Give it a shot. Let us know how you make out with it. It's just an incredible pattern. Thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and if you have any questions, feel free to give the shop a call. And don't forget, free shipping anywhere in the U.S. with no minimum. Guys, have a great day. Thanks.